Hello. Yeah. So uh, my name is uh, Shen Yang. You, uh, I'm the assistant uh, manager in a uh, Paul uh, in in, in uh, Texas string instrument. So in our team, we do a uh, power supply reference design, and this work is done by a uh, Boson uh, in in my team. So uh, today we are going to go through uh, this uh, agenda. So first we will go uh, go through some. Uh, key uh, modular common redundant power supply requirements and uh, talking about the topology top selection we uh, we do to uh, trying to achieve high efficient efficiency and uh, uh, talking about the uh, uh, bulk cap size uh, reduction for higher power density uh, rerush current requirement and uh, how we manage it, the rerush current uh, during AC uh, cycle dropout and uh, um, what are the steps that we can uh, used to achieve a low ITHD. So <clears throat> first thing uh, uh, on the new uh, you know, modular common redundant power supply, uh, they uh, does require high efficiency. So basically uh, it's based on the 80 plus titanium uh, grade uh, on the efficiency, efficiency side. Uh, for the power density, you know, uh, in the past, the uh, CRPS uh, requirement, uh, the power supply in CRPS, uh, usually they uh, can achieve around like 80 watt per cubic inch uh, power density. But for the, the new MCRPS, uh, people are asking for uh, over 100 watt per cubic inch. So we do need to uh, provide higher power in uh, uh, at the same uh, uh, space. So the other uh, key requirement is that uh, the rerush current, like when the when when the AC input voltage drop off and uh, come back, and if the AC voltage come back, the input voltage is higher than the the uh, PFC output voltage, then you will see an inrush current, and the inrush current need to be like uh, below five times of uh, um, normal RMS current of the uh, power supply. And uh, also compared to the previous uh, CRPS, MCRPS uh, um, does require more strict uh, ITHD uh, total harmonic uh, distortion, uh, than, uh, especially at light load. So now at five to ten percent load, uh, the ITHD requirement is uh, need to be below eight point five percent. So. Uh, so people, uh, you know, on on the on this uh, server PSU, uh, generally we we'll have a EMI stage, PFC stage, and followed by an isolated DC DC stage. So for PFC stage, uh, in traditionally uh, people will use a bridge PFC, where you can see uh, a lot of uh, losses will consume uh, on this uh, bridge diode, and the efficiency is about 98 percent. So in order to reduce the bridge diode uh, power consumption, people move to the uh, uh, bridge release PFC. So first uh, is that this uh, uh, we call uh, AC switch uh, bridge release PFC or so-called H bridge PFC. It uh, can achieve you know like improve and uh, have efficiency improvement uh, about like 0.3 percent. And move forward, uh, some people just uh, re replace the bridge diode with uh, with MOSFET that can. Uh, Further improve the efficiency to around 98.5, uh, but if we we really want to achieve the best efficiency and best power density, then people will have to use a totem pole bridge release PFC, which will require a wide band gap device, and the efficiency can achieve around 99%. Okay, so um, so that, that's why uh, the the reason that's the reason why we choose a bridge release a totem pole bridge release PFC. And uh, because uh, there is a hold up time requirement, like 10 millisecond hold up time uh, needed uh, for the server PSU. So in order to hold up the, the 10 millisecond, we will need to have a bulk cap uh, in, the, in the intermediate bus. So the isolated DC-DC converter usually the uh, normal operation voltage is 390, and uh, you need to hold up down to like 300 volt or 320 volt you know, to, to maintain the output uh, voltage in regulation. So if we, uh, you know, in a three kilowatt power supply, if we, uh, you know, the isolated DC-DC converter has a 320 volt UVL, then we will need to have a 1.2 millifarad cap uh, in uh, in our power supply. 
But if we can insert a, a boost converter in between the PFC and isolated DC DC converter stage, then we are able to allow the ball cap uh, voltage go uh, even further down, and you know, man, just maintain the small cap. Uh, in this design, we use a, a two microfra, which is very small, uh, and we allow the ball cap go down to 240 volt, and the uh, ball cap uh, size reduction by 50 percent which is a uh, uh, great the, uh, improvement for the power density. So here's the waveform <coughs> that you can see the, uh, you know, during AC dropout, uh, the bug, uh, the DC-DC uh, <coughs> input voltage drop down and to around 3 three twenty volt, and then baby boost start to work to maintain the voltage uh, uh, back to 390 and hold up another 6 millisecond to uh, fulfill the overall 10 millisecond uh, hold up time. So <clears throat> the other thing we'll talk about is the inrush current requirement, right? So when the uh, when AC gets back and the relay is on, then there will, uh, there will be a, a huge inrush. If we don't do anything, then we could see a, a rerush current like over 80 amp or even higher than 100 amp. So uh, which will over the, the five, five times the uh, um, uh, regular uh, uh, PSU uh, IMS current, right? So. Uh, we need to we got to do something here. So what we propose here is, uh, so we have a MOSFET as a relay, right? So, and uh, in the circuit, we all have a current sensing device. So we <coughs> we utilize our current sensing device. Uh, when the inrush current happens, there will be a, uh, you know, uh, we will set the current uh, threshold. Once the threshold is hit, it, then we will quickly turn off the relay for uh, 10 microseconds. So for uh, then we we quickly turn it back on. So even so, when we turn it off, the current will limit it by the uh, semi, uh, semester uh, quickly to to limit the current down to close to zero uh, zero amp level. And when we turn the relay back on because of the inductance uh, in, in the circuit on the in my filter or PFC inductor, the current will uh, rise slowly, so it will not uh, achieve. The same level, uh, you know, uh, as fast uh, as uh, before. So, <coughs> um, so, and, and we we are able to charge out, charge out the the the, the output uh, cap, uh, the ball cap, uh, you know, uh, using this uh, period uh, when the input voltage is higher than output voltage, and uh, while still maintain the the current uh, peak current lower than five times of uh, uh, normal operation current. So here, 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 here are the uh, test waveform. As you can see, the, the current ratio got heated, and we quickly turn off the relay and turn it back on, and the current is slowly ramping up, and you know, use the energy to charge the ball cap. <coughs> For the ITHD, so basically there are a couple steps uh, we can uh, use, utilize to improve ITHD. The first thing is that yeah, we need to make sure the the ADC signal are clean, so you you will you know try to uh, place the local capacitance as close as possible to the ADC pin, and uh, if possible, we can add the uh, you know digital filter to further reduce the noise. And step two is uh, you know you can utilize the oversampling to get a more accurate feedback signal. And the third step is uh, for the output. Um, uh, voltage sensing uh, because there, there's also the AC ripple on the output voltage. So you want to uh, sense the output voltage at uh, the zero crossing uh, point where you see the average output voltage. Um, <coughs> and the uh, step four is uh, you know, special to the totem pole bridge list PFC because the, uh, it's uh, usually around zero crossing, you will see the, the high current spike. And what we need to do is, uh, you know, for ITSD, uh, uh, for good ITSD, we, we definitely want to uh, minimize the, the zero, uh, the inrush, uh, the, the current spike around zero crossing. So we you, you definitely need to do uh, some soft star uh, around zero crossing. And uh, if you do a, a step one, three, four, and you still don't get a good enough uh, THD, especially at the light load. What we can do is uh, we can do AC cycle skipping. So, for example, uh, if 
you 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 are at the five percent load, and you we uh, skip one cycle, and the uh, the operating cycle is actually ten percent load. So so you are at uh, doing doing so, you can get uh, like a ten percent ITSD at five percent load. Um, so so let's uh, let's how we uh, achieve those uh, key requirement in uh, MCRPS. So here are some uh, reference you can you can go through, and we have a poster outside and our content information. So if uh, you have uh, any question, feel free to contact us. For the baby boost converter that you have, uh, do you have the exact timing diagrams that you, for the controllers that you have, do you have like some document where it shows what exactly is being done? Uh, like, yeah, so basically we use a uh, voltage, right? So when voltage drop down to, to a certain level, we enable the, we enable the baby boost. We, we turn off the bypassing uh, fed and enable baby boost, yeah. Right, and uh, for the MOSFET as a relay that you are showing, when you turn it off, do you see any uh, like huge voltages that occurs uh, across the MOSFET? Yeah, so there's also need uh, some soft star uh, for the baby boost. So yeah, got it. Thank you. Any more questions? We have time for one more. Oh, over there. Oh, yes. Um, do you see any impact of introducing more parasitics to the system? Because you're adding like another switch and another converter. Oh yeah. B so if we go back to the schematic here, so uh, basically you can see there is a because baby boost is only work when there is it, it doesn't work uh, during the normal operation. It's only active. Uh, when the uh, during AC drop of uh, period, so uh, during normal operation there is a bypassing fed. So basically, it just short short out the circuit. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Sheng Yang Yu.